St. Luke's Bariatric Manual, Chapter 2, Lesson Plan 6. Continue to follow Lesson Plan 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Continue to follow the 30-60 minute rule. Start making protein 50% of your meal. Start taking vitamins. Stop all grazing and mindless eating. Drink at least six 8-ounce glasses of water every day. Follow week 5 of walking plan. Review chapter 8 exercise and watch suggested videos. Review countdown to surgery in chapter 3. You should be weighing yourself weekly. If you have not lost the required pre-op weight determined by your surgeon, please contact your dietitian for guidance. You will not be scheduled for surgery if you have not lost the required weight. Use the space below to document your successes, your challenges, your objective for next month, and your weight. Eating on a budget, the three Ps. Plan. Plan meals and snacks for the week according to an established budget. Find quick and easy recipes online. Include meals that will stretch expensive food items, stews, casseroles, stir-fried dishes. Make a grocery list. Check for sales and coupons in the local paper or online and consider discount stores. Ask about a loyalty card at your grocery store. Purchase. Buy groceries when you are not hungry and when you are not too rushed. Stick to the grocery list and stay out of the aisles that don't contain items on your list. Buy store brands if cheaper. Find and compare unit prices listed on shelves to get the best price. Purchase some items in bulk or as family packs, which usually cost less. Choose fresh fruits and vegetables in season. Buy canned vegetables with less salt. Pre-cut fruits and vegetables, individual cups of yogurt, and instant rice and hot cereals are convenient, but usually cost more than those that require a bit more prep time. Good, low-cost items available year-round include protein, beans, garbanzo, black, cannellini, vegetables, carrots, greens, potatoes, fruit, apples, and bananas. Prepare. Some meal items can be prepared in advance. Pre-cook on days when you have time. Double or triple up on recipes and freeze meal-sized containers of soups and casseroles or divide into individual portions. Try a few meatless meals by substituting with beans and peas or try no-cook meals like salads. Incorporate leftovers into subsequent meal. Be creative with fruit or vegetables and use it in different ways during the week. High protein diet, general information. What is a high protein diet? A high protein diet is a meal plan that includes extra protein. Your body may need extra protein if you have certain health conditions, such as cancer, burns, or ulcers. You may also need to follow this diet to get stronger after surgery or illness. Extra protein helps to heal wounds and form new tissue in the body. Your dietitian will tell you how much protein and how many calories you need each day. What are some foods that are high in protein? The average amount of protein is listed below in grams. To find the exact amount of protein in a food, read the food labels on packaged items. Dairy. One cup of any type of milk, 8 grams. One half cup of evaporated canned milk, 9 grams. One fourth cup of non-fat dry milk. 11 grams. 1 ounce of semi-hard or solid cheese. 7 grams. 1 fourth cup of Parmesan cheese. 8 grams. 1 half cup of cottage cheese. 14 grams. 1 half cup of pudding. 4 grams. 1 cup of plain or fruit yogurt. 8 grams. Meats and meat substitutes. 3 ounces of cooked freshwater fish. 21 grams, 3 ounces of cooked shellfish, 19 grams, 1 half cup of canned tuna, 14 grams, 3 ounces of cooked chicken, turkey, or other poultry, 24 grams, 3 ounces of cooked beef, pork, lamb, or other red meat, 21 grams, 1 large egg, 6 grams, one fourth cup of fat-free egg substitute, five grams. One half cup tofu or tempeh, 
10 grams. One cup of cooked dried beans, such as pinto, kidney, or navy, 15 grams. Nuts and seeds, two tablespoons of almonds, cashews, sunflower seeds, or walnuts, five grams. Two tablespoons of peanuts, seven grams. Two tablespoons of peanut butter, eight grams. How can I add extra protein to food? Add powdered milk to milk, cereals, scrambled eggs, soups, and casseroles. Add cheese to sauces, soups, or vegetables. Add eggs to tuna, salads, sauces, or casseroles. Add nutrition supplements and breakfast drink mixes to milk or shakes. Add nuts to foods or eat them as snacks. Add meat, beef, chicken, and pork to soups, casseroles, pasta dishes, or vegetables. Add beans, peas, and other legumes to salads. Eat cottage cheese or yogurt with fruit. Tips for eating healthy when eating out. As a beverage choice, ask for water or order fat-free or low-fat milk, unsweetened tea, or other drinks without added sugars. Ask for whole wheat bread for sandwiches. In a restaurant, start your meal with a salad packed with veggies to help control hunger and feel satisfied sooner. Ask for salad dressing to be served on the side, then use only as much as you want. Choose main dishes that include vegetables, such as stir fries, kebabs, or pasta with tomato sauce. Order steamed, grilled, or broiled dishes instead of those that are fried or sauteed. Choose a small or medium portion. This includes main dishes, side dishes, and beverages. Order an item from the menu instead of heading to the all-you-can-eat buffet. If main portions at a restaurant are larger than you want, try one of these strategies to keep from overeating. Order an appetizer size portion or a side dish instead of an entree. Share a main dish with a friend. If you can chill the extra food right away, take leftovers home in a doggy bag. When your food is delivered, set aside or pack half of it to go immediately. Resign from the Clean Your Plate Club. When you've eaten enough, leave the rest. To keep your meal moderate in calories, fat, and sugars, ask for salad dressing to be served on the side so you can add only as much as you want. Order foods that do not have creamy sauces or gravies. Add little or no butter to your food. Choose fruits for dessert most often. On long commutes or shopping trips, pack some fresh fruit, cut up vegetables, low-fat string cheese sticks, or a handful of unsalted nuts to help you avoid stopping for sweet or fatty snacks. Core strengthening exercises. General information. What do I need to know about core strengthening exercises? Core strengthening exercises help heal and strengthen muscles of your hips, back, and abdomen to prevent re-injury. They are beginning exercises to help support your spine. Ask your caregiver if you need to see a physical therapist for more advanced exercises. Do the exercises on a mat or firm surface, not on a bed, to support your spine and avoid low back pain. Do the exercises in the same order every day to train your muscles to work together. Your caregiver will show you how to perform these exercises. Do them every day or as directed by your caregiver. Move slowly and smoothly. Avoid fast or jerky motions. Stop if you feel pain. It is normal to feel some discomfort at first. Regular exercise will help decrease your discomfort over time. How do I perform core strengthening exercises safely? Hold each exercise for five seconds. When you can do the exercise without pain for five seconds, increase your hold to 10 to 15 seconds. When you can do the exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, add the next exercise. Increase your time you hold each exercise or repeat the exercise as directed. As you do each exercise, breathe normally. Do not hold your breath. Abdominal bracing. Lie on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Place your arms in a relaxed position beside your body. Pull your belly button in toward your spine. Do not flatten or arch your back. Tighten the abdominal muscles below your belly button. Hold for five seconds. Begin all your exercises with abdominal bracing. You can also practice abdominal bracing throughout the day 
while you are sitting or standing. Bridging. Lie on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Rest your arms at your side. Tighten your buttocks and then lift your hip one inch off the floor. Hold for five seconds. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 seconds, increase the distance you lift your hips. A good goal is to be able to lift your hips so that your shoulders, hips, and knees are in a straight line. Curl up. Lie on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Place your hands, palms down, underneath the curve of your lower back. Next, with your elbows on the floor, lift your shoulders and chest two to three inches. Keep your head in line with your shoulders. Hold this position for five seconds. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, you may add a rotation. While your shoulders and chest are lifted off the ground, turn slightly to the left and hold. Repeat on the other side. Dead bug. Lie on your back with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Place your arms in a relaxed position beside your body. Begin with abdominal bracing. Next, raise one leg, keeping your knee bent. Hold for five seconds. Repeat with the other leg. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, you may raise one straight leg and hold. Repeat with the other leg. Quadruped. Place your hands and knees on the floor. Keep your wrists directly below your shoulders and your knees directly below your hips. Pull your belly button in towards your spine. Do not flatten or arch your back. Tighten your abdominal muscles below your belly button. Hold for five seconds. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, you may extend one arm and hold. Repeat on the other side. Side bridge. Standing side bridge. Stand next to a wall and extend one arm toward the wall. Place your palm flat on the wall with your fingers pointing upward. Begin with abdominal bracing. Next, without moving your feet, slowly bend your arm to 90 degrees. Hold for five seconds. Repeat on the other side. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, you may do the bent leg side bridge on the floor. Bent leg side bridge. Lie on one side with your legs, hips, and shoulders in a straight line. Prop yourself up onto your forearm so your elbow is directly below your shoulder. Bend your knees back to 90 degrees. Begin with abdominal bracing. Next, lift your hips and balance yourself on your forearm and knees. Hold for five seconds. Repeat on the other side. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, you may do the straight leg side bridge on the floor. Straight leg side bridge. Lie on one side with your legs, hips, and shoulders in a straight line. Prop yourself up onto your forearm so your elbow is directly below your shoulder. Begin with abdominal bracing. Lift your hips off the floor and balance yourself on your forearm and the outside of your flexed foot. Do not let your ankle bend sideways. Hold for five seconds. Repeat on the other side. When you can do this exercise without pain for 10 to 15 seconds, ask your caregiver for more advanced exercises. When should I contact my caregiver? Your pain becomes worse. You have new pain. You have questions or concerns about your condition, care, or exercise program. Care agreement. You have the right to help plan your care. Learn about your health condition and how it may be treated. Discuss treatment options with your caregiver to decide what care you want to receive. You always have the right to refuse treatment. Non-weight-bearing activity. General information. What is non-weight-bearing activity? Non-weight-bearing, NWB, activity is exercise or motion you can do without supporting your own weight. For example, your weight is supported by water when you swim. NWB activities will not cause impact or strain. You can increase your strength, flexibility, cardiovascular health, and balance with NWB activities. You can also prevent muscles from becoming tight or short after an injury. You may also need to do NWB activities until an injury heals, or you may need to continue if you have a long-term condition. Your healthcare provider will tell you how long to continue doing NWB activities. Why may I need NWB activities? Rest for one or both of your legs or knees after an injury or surgery. 
weak or brittle bones that would break if you put too much weight on them. Joint pain from being overweight or from arthritis makes weight-bearing exercise painful. Elderly age. Limited mobility in your legs. Lack of cartilage in one or both knees. Diabetes complications such as neuropathy increase your risk for fall and make walking difficult. Long-term low back pain. What are some examples of NWB activities? Swimming, water aerobics or rowing, riding a bicycle or using a stationary bicycle, lifting weights or using resistance bands while seated, using a hand bike to work only your upper body, range of motion exercises for joint flexibility, isometric exercises that tighten and relax muscles several times in a row, certain yoga poses that do not need you to support your weight. Why do I need to go to physical therapy? A physical therapist can teach you NWB activities that will build muscle strength and improve your balance. He will show you how to prevent injury and decrease your risk for falls during NWB activity. For example, he can show you how to use assistive devices such as crutches to help support your weight. He will also help you plan NWB activities that will raise your heart rate for cardiovascular exercise. Adults should try to get at least 150 minutes of cardiovascular exercise each week. What do I need to know about safety? Stop if you feel pain. Do not move joints beyond their normal range of motion. Rest your joints during a flare-up if you have a disease such as arthritis. Do not lift heavy weights unless you can handle the weight easily. You may need to work up to using heavy weights. Talk to your healthcare provider if you feel pain during your activities. Move slowly and smoothly. Do not make fast or jerky motions. Use assistive devices as directed. Support your weight on crutches, a walker, or other devices as directed by your healthcare provider. Do a variety of activities. The same activity every day may injure a muscle or joint. You may overtrain some muscles and not train others enough. Talk to your healthcare provider about safe activities during pregnancy. You may not be able to lift weights while you are pregnant. Your healthcare provider can help you plan safe NWB activities during pregnancy. When should I contact my healthcare provider? You have a new or worsening pain during activity. You have questions or concerns about your condition or care. Care agreement. You have the right to help plan your care. Learn about your health condition and how it may be treated. Discuss treatment options with your caregivers to decide what care you want to receive. You always have the right to refuse treatment.